Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the world of VAT, or value added tax. Now, as a business, I know it's one of those phrases that absolutely fears most small businesses. But this video is designed to make sure that you understand what VAT is all about and how it can affect your business. So grab yourself a coffee, get yourself sat down, roll that intro, and we will talk all about the world of VAT. Oh, in QuickBooks Online. Let's not forget that bit. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick and I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trader with fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, if even merch now, and also head of account here at Bofix. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the world of VAT and it's probably one of those things that you don't really want to talk about, but you need to, because the more you understand what VAT is, the better you can be prepared for it if it's going to affect your business. So first and foremost, let's talk about when VAT is applicable to you and your business. Okay, let's set the scene. I'm a small business, and as a small business, I like to sell things. It's probably what all small businesses really should be looking to do. So if I get myself signed in to my point of sale, or sorry, say electric point of sale, and if you want a video of how to use an electronic point of sale for your business, then head over to the Boffix channel, where our sister channel, where we talk about the world of this little beauty. But anyway, imagine let's set the scene. I am going to want to sell some products. So I open up my point of sale solution. I get it all ready. I have the opportunity to sell a Zettel terminal. Now, that's what this is, by the way. So I've got the opportunity to sell this Zettel terminal. But how does VAT come to play in all this? Well, as a business, VAT at the very start is a choice. You have a choice of, do I want to be combat registered or don't I want to be combat registered? Until you reach a turnover of £85,000 in a 365 day period, and at that point, you don't have a choice anymore, you have to be combat registered. So let's part that to one side of where it being forced to be VAT registered. Let's go back to the start where you have a choice. And the choice is, do you VAT register or don't you VAT register? Why would you want to make a choice either way? Well, first of all, you need to understand what VAT is all about. So let's go back to my scenario. I'm trying to sell you, using my electronic point of sale, one of these bad boys so you can have your business be as remote as possible, having the able to be able to sell by card as simply as it can ever be. Well, if you are trying to sell this device to me and utilizing it and creating it or selling a service, then VAT may be applicable to you. You see, the whole point of VAT is when I sell this item to you, am I selling this item with or without VAT at the very beginning? Because without VAT, this is dead straightforward. I sell you the item and that's all I need to worry about. I include it in my tax return or I include it in my company tax return and then that's it. I don't have any other taxes to worry about it. If I was VAT registered though, the difference is, is when I sell this item to you, I have to sell this with VAT on top. So let's keep these numbers really straightforward. If this item I'm going to sell to you was £100 and I'm not VAT registered, I sell it to you for £100. Nothing else needs to worry about. If this item though was £100 and I am VAT registered, then I have a choice to make. Do I sell this item to you for £120, which is that VAT on top? Or do I sell it for £100 and include VAT into it? Which will be around about £83.66 with VAT on top. Yeah, that's right. But what does that VAT you, you've just collected actually mean? The idea of average business is you're collecting VAT from an end consumer. That's you and me. When we head to the shops and we go and buy something and make that conscious decision to go and buy whatever it is we're going to buy, then in most circumstances, we're probably buying something with VAT on top, especially your supermarkets and your bigger organisations, because they're probably going to have sold £85,000 worth of products or services within the last 12 months. So there's a very good possibility that they are already VAT registered. In fact, it's probably guaranteed. So as an end consumer, we are deciding to buy something and then deciding to get charged VAT on top of it. Because VAT stands for value added tax. So it's you buying something as an end consumer and having the tax on that product or service. So as a business then, especially at the beginning when we get a choice, 
then we're choosing to, if we become back registered early, to start putting VAT onto our products and services. And in most circumstances, that sounds ludicrous because at the end of the day, you're then having to make your products and service either 20% more expensive than someone who isn't VAT registered, or you're deciding to sell your products and services at 20% less. In both ways, that seems a little bit crazy, doesn't it? But what do we do with this VAT? So the idea of a VAT registered business is we collect that VAT on those products and services. So again, I sell you this fancy IZ or terminal. I sell it for 120 pound. I keep 100 pound as my money, but I hold on to that 20 pounds until it's time to do my back return. Now, I've then held on to 20 pound. I come to my back return on a monthly, quarterly or annual basis, mostly quarterly. When I do my back return, I then say how much VAT I've collected on behalf of selling all of my IZettles in this case. So I'm collecting all the VAT, but it doesn't just stop there. I also get the opportunity to actually take and keep VAT from anything that I've actually purchased. Because remember who's supposed to get VAT charged to, it's the end consumer. So if I'm selling this to you, then when I bought this in the first place, let's say I paid £50 plus VAT, so that's £50 with £10 VAT on top, so it's 60 quid that I paid over, then at that point, I am able to claim that VAT back because it's not actually me, the business, it's you, the consumer, that should be charged the VAT in the first place. So as a VAT registered business, I get to claim back VAT on a lot of my expenses. Heat and light, repairs and renewals, rent in some circumstances, my accountancy bill, my subscriptions. There's a lot of VAT that I've incurred as a business and especially any products and service costs that I have. So back to that whole point of I have a choice. Do I become back registered at the very beginning or do I not? Well, it's all going to really depend on who you're selling your goods and services to. If you're selling it to the general public, me and you, then at that point, it's going to be difficult for you to justify being back registered most of the time. Because most of the time, all you're doing is you are making it so that you are 20% more expensive from the offset. And in most circumstances, not all, but in most circumstances, it does make sense for you to wait a while, let yourself get to that £87,000 and then become VAT registered. But what if you're selling to another business, especially another business who is VAT registered? Well, they don't care if you're VAT registered. In fact, they have no care whatsoever. If you charge them this product for £100 and then £20 VAT on top, well, they'll just take that 20 quid and they will claim it on their next VAT return. So for them, it's still going to cost £100. If you weren't VAT registered and you sold it for £100, well, then it'll be £100 to them. So in both circumstances, you being VAT registered has no variance to what their cost is going to be. So if you're selling B2B, business to business, and especially to business to business where they're VAT registered, actually being VAT registered is quite beneficial to you. You sell this for £100, add £20 on top, no one cares. You then claim all the VAT that you've incurred, suddenly you've made a nice tasty profit. Now there is administration involved in VAT. Each quarter or monthly you're going to have to file a VAT return. Each quarter or monthly you're going to have to pay your VAT return as well. And you've got to remember that you've got to collect that VAT hold it to one side and pay it over to the Batman. So VAT is a very complex area, but if you keep it dead straight and simple in your mind, hopefully you can understand the concept. The concept is that me and you as consumers, when we decide to buy something, we are declaring at that point that we're happy to pay VAT. Happy is probably not the right word, but you get my drift. Now, if I'm taking this product off you as a consumer and I'm paying over £120, you realistically should hold on to that £20 because that £20 is not yours. That £20 should be put into a pot one side, into a savings account or whatever, and then when you come to do your VAT return, you take that £20 out and you're happy to go. You effectively are becoming a vehicle for HMRC to charge additional taxes on your products and services that you've got to remember is never yours. Now VAT becomes more complicated than that in the most complex form. There's cash accounting versus accrual accounting, there's flat rate scheme, there's a margin rate scheme, there's partial exemption scheme. So there's lots and lots of things that could be complicated to you. That's where QuickBooks Online comes in to try and make it as simplified as possible. Let's have a look at what QuickBooks Online looks like and how it can help you. 
Okay, first and foremost, this is your VAT account. When you become VAT registered, part and parcel of it is you create a VAT return. Now, if you're watching this, trying to understand what VAT is, and this is the way you're submitting your VAT return, stop. Because you have only got until the 1st of November until that system is completely and utterly taken away from you. So from the 1st of September, you will have to use software like QuickBooks Online to file your VAT return. So how has QuickBooks figured out how to make VAT easy? So first of all, on your navigation panel towards the bottom is a VAT center. And here it gives you all the information you need of what that next VAT return should look like. Top left hand corner is how you've collected, what VAT you've collected on sales. Next to it is how much you've claimed on purchases and then any adjustments, which we'll come to in a minute. Finally, it's gonna tell you what VAT is due or in this case is refunded to you at the end of it. Yes, that's right. I said the word refunded. So in some circumstances, if you've collected less than you've actually incurred a VAT, then you get to refund the difference from one to another. Is what you've collected less what you've suffered. So if the collected is less than the suffered, then it's a nice little refund. So another reason why you might want to become VAT registered early is if your VAT that you sell is at 0%. But Aaron, I can hear you all say now, you said VAT was at 20%, what gives? Well, actually, it's because VAT has multiple rates. Let's have a look. QuickBooks Online has some settings for you, which includes edit rates. Now, the edit rate section here kind of brings in all of those complicated VAT elements. So I've got my standard 20% VAT here. That's the one you're going to use 99% of the time for most businesses. Then you have exempt, where there are certain expenses like insurance that are exempt from VAT. But then you also have 0% VAT as well. 0% VAT is designed to be for those items that are classed as essentials. Therefore, they have a rate of 0% at this point in time. Have to be careful of the difference between exempt and zero, but effectively 0% as a VAT is designed to be only on essentials. And the reason it's zero not exempt is because tomorrow HMRC could turn around and they could put it to 1% if they wanted to. Technically, they've got been, but you know what I mean. And the rate of 5% VAT, which is also applicable. Now, you'll see in QuickBooks Online, there are a lot of other ones. And we have our tick boxes here that we can turn features on and off if we need to. Now, my biggest tip from using VAT in QuickBooks is to just curate this list as much as possible. Don't have anything on here that you don't use. If you don't have any imports like that, turn the import one off and only have the rates that are going to be applicable to you and your business. What else is that section? Well, there is the edit settings page where I can choose if I want quarterly, yearly or monthly. When it starts, if I'm standard or cash, we can cover that in a different video. And the effective date of any new schemes, flat rate scheme, your VAT number and turn in MTD on and off. MTD being the fact that we can't just use a government gateway now to submit VAT returns. We have to file by these accounts. We have to file by something like QuickBooks Online. So in the simplest step, let's have a look at it. If I was to raise an invoice now, and I wanted to raise an invoice as of today, and I chose a product and service of stock example, and that stock example is what we said was an IZ terminal. It was 100 pound. Then my next step is I've got to decide what VAT I am selling at. So is it any of the complicated ones or is it 20% VAT? Well, in my case, it's 20% VAT. Let's see what happens. Well, the subtotal is £100 because I'm only selling one of them at this point in time. But because I've selected 20%, QuickBooks has added £20 to my original cost, meaning that there's 120 that I'm going to send as my invoice. The client will pay me 120 and it, <clears throat> and what I want to be doing then is taking that £20 and saving it into my bank account. And ideally, once I've received the £120, I should then be putting the over £20 that I've collected, which remember isn't my money, it's the government's money. Realistically, I should be putting that into a savings account. So let's put that one in there. Now let's go to that scenario that I'm buying something. So I've gone to Amazon and I've bought this iZetto. It cost me £50 and then I choose my VAT from here. Which VAT did I suffer? Now from VAT point of view, I would highly recommend you use the attachment box. Get that invoice that you had that said that I was declared £10 of VAT on my invoice and then I put it into this attachment box here. 
prove him what it is. But at this point, what I'm saying is, even though I paid £60, then actually I incurred £10 with a VAT. So it's actually only cost me £50 because this £10, I'm going to use that to claim against my next VAT return. Save and close. So let's take a look back at our VAT centre. So at this point, I collected £20 of VAT on my sales. I've incurred £10 of VAT on my purchases, which means I owe the VAT man £10. I don't owe the VAT man £10 though until after my quarter end. In this case, my quarter doesn't end until the 31st of the 12th, 2022, and therefore I don't need to actually pay that VAT until the 7th of February 2023. But at this point in time, being the 16th of October, realistically, I should be putting £20 or £10, whichever you feel comfortable. But realistically, if I went and put £20 into my bank account, even though I've only got to pay £10 because there's move contained, then then I will know I have more than enough to pay my VAT bill at the end of the quarter. Now, before I prepare my return and submit it, then what I want to be doing is dropping the arrow down, going to the error check your return, because QuickBooks is so clever, they're actually going to check your return before you submit it. What it's done, it's saying that the period is still open, so it's probably too soon to file my VAT return. It's telling me that there are three items that are excluded from the VAT period. These are items that have what's called no VAT on. So no VAT on means that basically we don't have any indication of VAT whatsoever. And as I can see, there's a bounce back loan being paid, a, a money being transferred over, and some other item here that's been paid for rent. All of those have no VAT because they're not business expenses. So I'm going to look at your bank account and see if there are any transactions that realistically I should be reviewing now before I do it. You should never file a VAT return without those being done. It's going to check if there's any duplicates, any inconsistent VAT codes, or any exceptions. You see, QuickBooks Online has exceptions down to a T. And what exceptions are is if you make an adjustment in a previous VAT period. Let's have a look at how I mean by that. So let's look at this transaction from a previous period. Here we go, we've got telephone dedicated line at £101 at 20%. But let's say I've looked at my invoice a little bit more and actually found out I made a mistake. In fact, the mistake I made was when I looked at the attachment was the fact that £75 and 1p was exempt VAT and only £25 was 20%. But originally, at first, I had already claimed the full £100. So I'd put the, eight, the £16 odd and I'd claim that VAT. Now, though, I need to restrict that back because I'm not claiming the full VAT. So as you can see now, it's recalculated it at £4.17. Just so you know as well, if I had to put 0% on, you get two boxes. And that's going to tell you that that is looking at £75 at 0%, 0, and then 20% there. But let's just put this to exam, just so we can see exactly what happens. So what's happened now then, is if I save and close, press yes, it's going to tell me that that VAT had already been actually done. So let's press yes, and let's explain exactly what exceptions mean. So now we're looking at, you can see there's been one exception. And effectively what an exception is, is an item that you have already included in the VAT return previously, now, in this period, has been changed. So exceptions are something you should always look at. So let's have a look and review what exception we've got here. You can see that the British Telecom, 11th of the 5th, uh, which was a bill, we filed £100 in 1p, but you'll see on the VAT return itself that actually there's a change in the VAT, and the change in the VAT is because we've got less of it that's actually got VAT on it. We also can see largest income transaction, largest expense, so you can make sure they've got attachments on, etc. See, a nice breakdown of what VAT codes we use. So there's our one item we sold, there's our other one item we sold, and then there's the exempt item we've just brought through as an exception. So let's go and look at how this would look. So at the very bottom, the very bottom, there would normally be a prepare button, but because we're within the period itself, let's just go and prepare the return manually. So what's it telling me? Well, first of all, at the very top, it's got my period, start date, end date, and my submission date. And then it's got the amount that I've taken from my sales, 20 pound as we've seen. And in fact, if I click into here, you'll notice it's telling me that that transaction is sat there waiting to be paid over. You'll notice that if I keep on this column, there's my £10 that I'm taking, and you can see there's my £100 and there's my £60-odd pound that I would have had. There's my £100 of sales. So the £10 is how much I am claiming back as VAT. The £20 is how much I've collected. Take one away the other, that's where that original £10 came from. 
Exceptions though, if that's appearing this way, you've got to be really careful. Because in this case, I've actually overclaimed £12.50 because I've actually found that I've un I unfortunately have claimed way too much in a previous period. So now it's £2.50, then I'm paying over £22.50, which is the difference of the £12.50 that I incorrectly claimed in a previous period. I bet that I press the submit button and I'm off to the races. And the submission of the VAT return looks very similar to this. And there we have it. Hopefully that's given you more than enough information to understand at least the basics of what VAT is about. Remember, if you become VAT registered, you're collecting VAT on behalf of HMRC, ready to pay it over to them at the end of a quarter or a month. You now have to use some form of software to be able to submit the VAT return, so don't get caught out on that one. And our recommendation is obviously gonna be QuickBooks Online. Don't forget to use the links below. We have some discounted versions of QuickBooks Online to make sure that you're being as efficient as you possibly can. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel because that way you're going to be making sure that you're up to date on exactly what QuickBooks can do. We've got loads of training already done on QuickBooks Online and VAT. And we've got lots more to come as well. Also, if this is becoming way too complicated for you, then don't forget that over at Boffix, we can make sure that your VAT returns are done with minimal fuss. So head over to their channel, give that a like and a subscribe, and then use the information there to be able to get a consultation with them, which is completely free of charge. And one final thing that you need to remember though, and that is that whole idea of making sure that you are on top of your VAT. Well, remember at the beginning of your business, you have a choice, do you become VAT registered or do you not become VAT registered until you have up to 85,000 pound of rolling. Well, that's why QuickBooks can be a massive help to you. Jump into any profit and loss account, scroll to the top, drop this information down here, which is gonna be your date range, and use this since 365 days. Run the report, and that's gonna tell you at what figure you are currently at. That total income there, in my case, 60,000, near enough 60, is gonna be my role in 365 days. If that hits over or gets close to 85,000, I must register for VAT before then, otherwise I have the potential of penalties and some backdated VAT that nobody wants. So we'll always keep an eye on that date figure and you're gonna be in good hands. And that is it, that is it for today's video. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe and all that stuff. Make sure you share this content to as many people as you can. My name's been Alan Patrick, I am the Great Books Chap and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.